You say, well, Pastor, if Jesus joins me on my journey, what will he do? What will he do? Not only does the living Jesus want to join you on your journey, but another fact is that the living Jesus will point you to the Word. The living Jesus will point you to the Word. The two disciples, Cleopas and the other, they had a lot of questions. <laughs> right? Can I just say that God does not fall off the throne if you have a question? He doesn't get shook up. He doesn't get worried about it. And there's people that have a lot of questions. And sometimes I feel like the church of Jesus Christ is not allowed for enough dialogue so that people can really get their questions answered. You know, people have questions like, how do I know that the Bible is true? How do I know that Jesus Christ is really alive? Uh, you know, why is something a sin? Or, you know, why, of all the people in my circle of friends, why am I the one that has to go through this? People have questions, and it's okay to have questions. Tell your neighbor it's all right to have questions, all right? God is not afraid of your questions. And the reason why he's not afraid is because he has written the answers in the word of Almighty God. How many of you believe that this is the answer, my friend? Everything that you need to know about life, this is the B-I-B-L-E. Let me give you a, an acrostic. The basic instructions before leaving earth, all right? They're all found right here. If you want to know the answer to your questions, I dare you, I challenge you to go and seek them out in the Word of God. And Cleopas and his companions had questions, man. They, they didn't get it. They weren't, sure, um, they weren't sure who Jesus was. I'm sure they'd seen him before, but they didn't recognize him at that moment. They didn't know why Jesus had died. They didn't know uh, why the Jewish leaders had put him to death. They didn't understand that the death, burial, and even the resurrection of Jesus was all part of God's plan. And so things needed to be explained. How many of you know the Holy Spirit can explain to us when we have a question? Now, here's what happened. Luke 24, 27, it says, And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded to them all the scriptures, in all the scriptures, the things concerning himself. They were walking along the road having a Bible study. Amen. They were talking about the Old Testament. He was showing them exactly what needed to happen. He was showing them all of the, 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 the prophecies about him. I'm sure they must have went to Isaiah chapter 53 where he said he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement of our peace was upon him and by his stripes we are healed. I'm sure that he talked about all of those things. He was giving them all of that information. And he was telling them, listen, Moses pointed to Jesus. The prophets pointed to Jesus. One author who studied prophecy claims that there are 355 prophecies that are fulfilled in the person of Jesus Christ. Over 100 prophecies in his life, death, burial, and resurrection. I don't have time to explain it all today. I'm just telling you that the answers are found in the Word of God. Amen? There was a man by the name of Lee Strobel. How many of you ever heard of Lee Strobel? He, he, he was very upset a few years ago. He was an investigative reporter, and his wife became a believer, and he did not like it. He didn't want his wife to be a believer. He was upset about it, and so he said to himself, now this is a very intelligent, a highly motivated individual. He said, I'm going to go, and I'm going to prove that Jesus is a farce, that the teachings of the Bible are not true, that Jesus Christ was never resurrected, and so he took all of his skills of journalism and investigative reporting, and he went to seek out the truth that, that Jesus was a fake, but guess what he discovered? He discovered that Jesus Christ was really real, that the true word is true, that everything said about him was true, that, 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 that there's more evidence for the resurrection of Jesus Christ than any of the other historical figures that ever lived in all the history of the world. Come on today, church. I'm just telling you that if you've got questions, go after it. It's found in the word. He can be studied out and found to be true. Come on, give Jesus a big hand of praise today. And then number three, the third fact is this, that the living Jesus is waiting to be invited in. Everybody likes an invitation. Amen? Everybody. How many of you like it when somebody calls you up and says, look, come on over to my house. 
We're going to have a little dinner over there. Got the barbecue on. The smoker's smoking over here. My wife's making potato salad. My grandma's making some cherry pie. Come on over. Everybody likes an invitation. Right? And how many of you know Jesus is the same way? He likes to be invited in. Now let me just tell you this about Jesus, all right? Jesus Christ is the supreme authority in the world. The scripture says this, all authority, he said, all authority in heaven and in earth has been given unto me, right? He's king, he's God, he's Lord, and he could Actually, Jesus could actually demand that everybody come, kneel down, and worship Him and give Him honor and deference. But He doesn't. Do you want to know why? Because His highest value is that of choice. Jesus wants you to choose Him. He wants you to choose Him. Amen. He wants you to follow Him. And uh, he's waiting for you to invite him in. That's what happened to these two disciples, all right? Let's continue the story here, Luke 24, verse 89. It says, Then they drew near to the village where they were going, and he indicated that he would have gone further, but they constrained him, saying, Abide with us, for it is toward evening, and the day is far spent. And he went in to stay with them. Jesus wanted them to invite him in, obviously. He had walked with them seven miles. He had explained countless scriptures to them. And he's waiting to see what it is that they were going to do. He could have continued further on, but he wanted to see, are they going to invite me in? Come on in. They said, yeah, abide with us. It's late. Come on. They constrained him. They urged him to come in. I want you to know that Jesus is waiting for your invitation today. Is there anybody here who's glad you invited him in? Amen. I'm so glad that I have invited him in. Amen. And let me tell you about Jesus. He's waiting. The scripture says, Revelation 3.20, it says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. Picture that today. Jesus is standing and he's knocking. And it says this, If anyone hears my voice and opens the door. I'm glad it doesn't say, If anybody who's worthy... If anybody who's good enough, if anybody who's, you know, not as bad as the next guy, but, you know, not as, not a, you know, it doesn't say that. You want to know what it says? If anyone, come on, aren't you glad it just says, if anyone hears my voice and opens the door, he says, I will come in to him and dine with him and he with me. There's a famous painting of Jesus. Many of you have seen it. He's standing and he's knocking on the door of someone's heart, you know. And it's a beautiful painting, and we've actually dramatized that here a time or two. But the thing about the painting that's very impressive to me is that there is no latch on the outside of the door. Jesus is standing and he's knocking, but he can't open the door. You want to know why? It's the inside. you got to open him up on the inside, and you've got to let him in. And there's a lot of people in our world today that think, you know something, I mean, you know, I'm not like them church folk down there. You know, I, I don't just, I can't, I, no, I mean, Jesus wants nothing to do with me. With all the stuff I've been involved in, all the sins I've committed, you know, I mean, yeah, I, I, I like Jesus and all that, but I, seriously, he, he probably wouldn't really want to be with me. He probably really doesn't love me. How many of you know that's a big satanic lie? I'm just here today to declare you to you today that Jesus Christ loves you. He's knocking on your door. He wants for you to open up the door and as soon as you say come in, he's going to come walking in with his love, with his grace, with his forgiveness. Oh, come on. Aren't you glad you invited him in today? He's knocking. Hey, man, I'm so grateful. That's the reason why Jesus went to the cross. He went to the cross so that you and I would not have to be punished for our sin. He took our punishment on the cross. Amen. The scripture says the Lord laid on him. The Lord put on Jesus the iniquity, the sin of us all. And he took all of that sin load to the cross. And he satisfied the wrath of a holy God. And because of that, amen, he is the door to salvation. Amen. And we can come in through him. All we've got to do is open up the door and invite him in. And he's saying, I want to come in. And then the last fact is this. The living Jesus.